I, I was talking to a family here. Um, dad works in a warehouse, extra hours trying to pay the bills. Mum is a full-time carer for their disabled kids. They're terrified about this winter. They're terrified about their energy bills. They waited all summer to find out what the Conservatives were going to offer in terms of help, why you had your leadership campaign. They finally were told they'd get two years of help. This week, they're being told it might only be six months of help. Once again, their life, their winter, their future is on hold. And they are so anxious and they're cross. They're really cross because they told me they felt that an awful lot of this uncertainty now is down to the way you've handled the mini budget and handled the communication of it over the last couple of weeks. Well, look, the, the Prime Minister's made it clear that, the, that yeah, we made mistakes with regard to certain elements of the, of the mini budget, of the, that financial statement, and how it was uh, communicated generally, but also to, to the market. So she's, she's uh, apologised for that. Um, with regard to the energy support Is that package, enough? Is an we, apology well, enough? Is an apology enough? I mean, people here well. are selling, telling us that, of, of, of course, but, but in the real world, away from Westminster, when people are living with the lights off, when they're terrified about their bills and their fuel and everything, a lot of people feel that this is self-inflicted by the government and they, they want Liz Truss to go. Why do you imagine the Prime Minister currently is about as popular as tooth decay? Well, look, we, we saw that the proposals that were put forward in uh, the, the mini budget did not did not land well, they did not have the uh, desired uh, effect, and so she has changed those things. What we've also seen is very, very continuous and widespread uh, criticism, and of course that will have an impact on uh, the way people view her. What she wants to do, what the government wants to do, and this is absolutely right, is to be focused on delivering for the British people. How many more mistakes can she afford to make? I spoke to the Armed Forces Minister yesterday, uh, James Heapy, he said no more mistakes. Well, no one wants to make mistakes. No, of but I'm asking not. how many more can she afford to make? Look, I, uh, so the plan is not to make mistakes. You don't say, well, you know, I've got a certain number of mistakes that I'm allowed to make. We, we don't aim to make mistakes. And, and actually, the, 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 the simple truth in life, in, in politics, in business, in life, is that mistakes happen. They do happen. What you've got to do is recognise when they've happened and have humility to, uh, to, to make changes when you see things didn't go right. It was clear that the, uh, a number of the announcements, some of the announcements, but not all, some of the announcements in the, uh, the statement that Quasi made as Chancellor had a negative effect on markets and we've sought to address those things. You're using the same language you used when I spoke to you at the Conservative Party conference, despite the drama of what has happened and the impact of what's happened. Let me play you a little clip of what you said to me then. The Prime Minister made it really clear what her philosophy was when she was running for leadership. If people weren't listening properly, I think that's more their problem than hers. It was their problem if they weren't listening, Mr Cleverley, is what you told me. Would you like to say something different now? Look, I stand by what I... Look, Nick, uh, you know, you, you know me well, and you know that uh, I, I think carefully about what I say, and the point I made was we have to have a growth strategy. Liz set that no, you out. You said it was other people's problem if they weren't listening, and I put it to you as your problem and the Prime Minister's problem that you didn't listen to the Office for Budget Responsibility. You didn't listen to the Bank of England. You didn't listen to the former Chancellor, Rishi Sunak. You didn't listen to virtually every economist in Britain that told you this is what would happen. Indeed, when I asked Liz Truss to name one economist who agreed with her, she paused and eventually came up with Patrick Minford. So you needed to listen, not us. I mean, to use a driving analogy, I mean, it's a mistake to back into a lamppost or clip the curb or have a, a fender bender in a car park. It's also a mistake to spin off the motorway at 100 miles an hour and flip the car. Um, so there are relative mistakes, and surely the mistakes that the Prime Minister have made are terminal in terms of her career. For example, she's not very good at presenting herself. How do you think she'll manage at Prime Minister's questions today? Well... The Prime Minister's questions that she's done uh, thus far, I think she's actually demonstrated that she's very much on top of her brief and she is very comfortable at the dispatch box. Predictions of her uh, Sorry, demise Mr. at the dispatch Mr. box... Mr Cleverley, she didn't even appear she, uh, the other day when Sir Keir Starmer called an urgent... She didn't appear. She, put, she sent Penny Mordaunt. Penny Mordaunt had to explain that the Prime Minister was not hiding under a desk. And then when Jeremy Hunt stood up, 
He had to dismantle trussonomics piece by piece as the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister, the person you say is comfortable at the dispatch box and on top of their brief, sat there like a chastised school child. Robert has just messaged breakfast this morning, watching the programme. He says, if this government thinks they can cancel the triple lock again, they can wave goodbye to pensionate votes and they will lose power for many years to come. I mean, some of your MPs say there's no way they would, they would vote to break the triple lock. Could you even get that through Parliament if you wanted to? Well, as I say, manifesto commitments are uh, important. I, and, I, and I know, I know your viewers, I know your viewers would want me to, to give certainty here and now. I'm not, I'm not in a position to do that because the announcements are going to be made uh, in the very, very near future by the Chancellor. That's the right thing to do. But I completely understand when people are feeling pressure on their bills, when they're worried about their mortgages going up, when they're worried about the, uh, how much it costs to, to fill their car or heat their homes. We, we absolutely get it. These are your it's words, nice Nick. These but, are grassroots but, frustration. But, uh, they blame everyone but themselves. They should conduct themselves very differently. Why not give the people a general election? Well, if we see the things which are creating the challenges that we're all uh, facing, uh, both you know, domestically and internationally, I'm unconvinced that any of those things would be made better by a general election at the moment. What the British people demand of us, and they are right to demand this of us, is that we focus on their priorities, is we address those uh, things like interest rates, uh, things like inflation rates, that we make sure we get the infrastructure built to help grow the economy, that we protect them from the increases in uh, energy prices. The Bank These, of England said this Nick, week, come on, the Bank of England finish. said this week that the five largest daily moves in the rate of borrowing, what we call 30-year inflation link guilts, have happened since the mini budget. They happened here. They didn't happen in any other country, Mr. Cleverly. Yes, and what we've also seen is a number of those guilt yields, the guilt yields uh, and long-term borrowing yields are recovering. What we are seeing, and in fact, I think Faisal said earlier on in the programme, that actually the inflation rates would be higher had it not been for the intervention that the government made. And, uh, and, and look, I'm not suggesting, I am not suggesting, and indeed the Prime Minister is not suggesting that everything she did was right, but she recognised when she made a mistake and she set about repairing uh, the, uh, the things we got wrong. But we've also got to understand that these are global pressures, these inflationary okay. pressures, these energy price pressures are affecting economies, developed and developing economies right across the globe. Prime Minister's got a plan, the Chancellor's got a plan. How do we know plan. she's got a plan? She's, She'll be setting it out today. <laughs> but it's already been PMQs, worked up by uh, And then the Chancellor will be setting Hunt. out his plan in just over a week's time when he yeah, makes it. Yeah, would he make a good Prime Minister? Who? Jeremy Hunt. We've got a Prime Minister, and as I say, for all the reasons I've just discussed, I don't think it's a good idea to be focused on our you know, internal frustrations. And I get why people are frustrated, but rather than focusing on our internal frustrations, what we, what we should be focusing on is delivering for the British people. OK, but people. why should we believe this plan when the last plan was rubbish? OK, the, the, the Prime Minister and the Chancellor have, have learnt lessons from what happened previously.